In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at how we can edit existing customers. Over here, we'll be making use of our customer DAO methods that we created earlier. In the previous lecture, I just demonstrated other way that is by using CSS HTML pages, how you can consume data from the database. Now, continuing with the CRUD operation, we'll be now making use of update customer method from our customer DAO. In order to do this, we'll be first of all going to pages and creating a razor component. So we'll click on add and here we'll be choosing new item. From here, select razor component and then give it a name. For instance, I'm going to give it edit and then click on add. So if you see in our customers.razor page here, we have this edit link coming up. The same will be consumed over here. So when we say edit customer, we'll be basically sending the user to this page. So we'll have the path set as edit and then obviously we'll have an ID over here. So we'll say ID. That will be the ID of the customer. And after this, we'll also have to make use of the DAO that we have. So we'll be saying this namespace will be using Blazor Web App. Dot data. Now, once we have that, we'll be injecting our service that we created. So if you take a look at customers.razor, exactly this is what we are doing over here as well. To start with, we'll be pasting it over here. Now we have our customer services included. Here, we'll also include navigation manager so that we can travel back to the page from where the customer came. So we'll be saying inject and here we'll be making use of navigation manager we'll save navigation manager and we'll give it a name as navigation manager now once we have all these things we'll have to create our edit form where we will be showing the data of the customer for that We'll be pasting this snippet that we have. Here you can see we have customer ID, name, address, state, city, country, email. Currently, as it's not defined, that's why you get the red squiggly lines. And here we are making use of the bind attribute to bind this model with this input control. Now after that, let's go to the code view now. And here, as I mentioned, we'll be receiving an ID. So we need to define this. The first thing that we do is we'll have this parameter attribute. So inside the code block, we'll have parameter and then we'll give it a name like public and then a string ID and we'll set getter and setter over here. Once that's done, we'll be creating a customer object. That is what we are using over here if you see customer. So what we'll do is here we have the customer class. is equal to new customer and we'll just try updating the instances over here that we have so we'll just copy this replace everywhere with the smaller version so we now have the bind attribute all set and here we have the customer instance now what we need to do is retrieve the customer information for that we'll be creating a method and this will be an asynchronous task we'll say on initialized async and inside this we'll be making use of the customer object that we created is equal to we'll say await and then task dot run this is how you can convert your synchronous methods into asynchronous by using task.run. So here we are saying we need the information and that will come from customer services dot. Then we have the method get customer data. And here get customer data is expecting integer ID. So we'll say convert dot to int 
32 and we'll then pass the ID over here and once that's done we'll have our customer data with us after that we just need to write a couple of more methods like to update the customer we'll have protected void and let's call it as update customer and here we'll be using the service that we had customer service dot update customer and we'll pass the customer instance in this and finally once it's done we can use the navigation manager that we included to go to the page from where this was called that is the customers page and here I've made a slight modification that is if you see in nav menu dot razor I have updated the href to capital customers and the same I've done over here just to make it consistent customers that is the page name and here when you are using navigate to customers and then I'm providing this boolean operation as true so this is going to ensure that you are redirected to the customers page one more update that we need to make is that there was a syntax error with the bind syntax so here we have to proceed it with at the rate symbol then only the value will be reflected in the input text box and the last thing is to include the on click event so the method that we created update customer will go over here on click update customer and once that's done you can run the application and hear how it is looking in the browser so we have all the customers available let's go ahead and click on any one of them try updating one over here like from Johnny to John and click on save and there you go the name has been updated and use has been redirected to the customers page now in the next one we'll take a look at how we can add a new customer and then we'll finally close this one by reviewing the delete operation